going on, Sunbelt fans? My name is Dominic Crescetto, the host of the Sunbelt Syndicate podcast, where we review the week that was and look forward to the week ahead in Sunbelt football, basketball, and baseball all year long. Follow on all social platforms, including YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. All right, jumping back into the baseball action. I was out and about uh, traveling this past week, uh, mostly the, the weekend, but wanted to jump back in and cover up everything that went on over the weekend all the way up until Tuesday night as far as baseball in the Sun Belt is concerned. So first we will jump into kind of the weekend games, weekend series, then we'll take a look at the standings and also cover Tuesday's games since we didn't have any on Monday to talk about. So overall, we had St. John's take three straight against Marshall. ODU did the exact opposite. They took three straight against St. Joe's. Coastal easily swept Davidson. Georgia Southern was in a hard-fought battle with UCF, but comes away with a series victory, two games to one. Campbell, a very good baseball program team, they take the series from the Cajuns 2-1, but the Cajuns do win that final one down there at home to wrap that one up. Troy stays hot, wins three straight over USC Upstate. Not much of a challenge there for them. Southern Miss wins three straight against Dallas Baptist. Dallas Baptist is a pretty decent team. The Eagles didn't score tons of runs against them, so they had some close, hard-fought victories in that series. Incarnate Word, unfortunately, takes three straight from ULM. Texas State, Grand Canyon, two good baseball schools. Grand Canyon ends up taking that series two games to one against the Bobcats. Georgia State takes the series victory over Presbyterian two games to one. South Alabama had a little bit different of a schedule this weekend than anybody else. They go down in the first game to Pepperdine 12 to 5. In their second game, they lose to Iowa 6 to 2, but they wrap up their weekend beating Southern 8 to 3. App State and Gardner Webb did not get to play their full series as the first game was canceled due to weather, but they End up tying one game apiece in that one. James Madison gets a little bit of a stunner, I'd say, and they they go down in the series to UMass Lowell 2-1. to one. And then Arkansas State and Missouri State actually played a doubleheader in their series. They were the only one that played a doubleheader this weekend, I believe. I don't think anybody else did. Uh, but Arkansas State, unfortunately, falls in that one two games to one to Missouri State. And then we will take a look at Tuesday's games. I was lucky enough to be at one in person, but we'll go down the list here and just cover these real quick. Marshall gets back in their winning ways, beating Radford 11-2. Old Dominion easily takes care of Norfolk State. Kind of a close regional game there, obviously. They take care of them 16-7. James Madison gets back on their winning ways, 9-4 over VMI. Georgia State. Stays winning, beats Kennesaw State 14-8. to A good program victory there for Georgia State over a good Kennesaw State team coming out from last year. In probably the biggest win, actually undoubtedly the biggest win for the conference of the night, Coastal Carolina hosts Wake Forest and beats them 13-11. to Wake Forest previously unbeaten, so big victory there for Coastal Carolina, especially at home. I know that their record isn't where a lot of their fans probably had had hoped it would be at this point. So to get that victory is huge for them. App State takes on Duke. This is the game I was at uh, right here locally for me in Durham at uh, Durham Bulls Athletic Park, a minor league baseball team. Most of you probably bigger baseball fans especially know the movie, the baseball movie Bull Durham. That's kind of where their name comes from. Uh, So... Lucky enough to see one in that park, which is really, really nice. Duke takes that one 5-0, uh, just obviously knowing a little bit more background in that one. Duke has been pretty hot as of late. They beat number 9 ECU uh, just, I think, about a week ago now. They put up 20-plus runs two or three times this year. So good for App to keep them to only five runs. However, App State didn't really have the, the bats going. They got one hit. Uh, So that's not great for them offensively. But the defense going up there against a good, solid Duke team was decent. I mean, to have a Duke team that puts up a lot of runs and only score five is not bad. Going back into the other games, we had Georgia taking down Georgia Southern in a pretty high-scoring affair. 
Bulldogs 17, Eagles 11. So not too bad right there for the Eagles, but you know, we all know that it's never fun to lose to the the power school in your state. So I know that they really wanted that one. Uh, scored plenty of runs, but unfortunately Georgia just scored more. Texas State goes down to UTSA, not one that they'd want to lose, kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum. I was thinking maybe Texas State is above where UTSA should be, maybe. I don't know. It's going to depend how this season plays out, but I know Texas State fans probably thought they'd win that one going in, so to lose that one by a score of 11-2, to two, not great. Uh, ULM does get back on their winning ways uh, because we know that they – just got swept rather easily by Incarnate Word, so to have them get a victory 4-3 to three over Memphis is good return for them. We had Florida Gulf Coast taking down Troy in a little bit of a surprise to me just because Troy was so hot and they're playing at home. Uh, not to say Florida Gulf Coast isn't good. I think they're a very good baseball team from trying to remember if they're up there. is one of the better teams record-wise right now, but uh, yeah. A little bit of a surprise only because Troy was at home and looking pretty good so far this season. And in some of the later games that just finished up before I'm recording here, Ole Miss took down Southern Miss 11-5 to down there in Oxford, Mississippi. I know Southern Miss fans are getting a little antsy with the start and not maybe having as many wins as they had hoped at this point. But we know they're still a good, solid team. Uh, I think at this point they're still in the rankings. We'll see if that, anything happens after this game to bring them down. But... South Alabama wraps up the night. I think they rounded into uh, uh, New Orleans, rounded into a double play to end that one. So the Jaguars take that one over New Orleans, 10-7. to So good to see South Alabama get on a two-game streak here after a rough start to their weekend series. So now we'll jump into the conference standings overall. Last time we checked in on this, we had Troy, who hadn't lost a game, one of the last unbeatens left. Unfortunately, they are now... Not on that list any longer, and we do not have an unbeaten team in the conference at all anymore. We were also one of three conference nationally that had every team with a 500 record or better. Unfortunately, after the sweep of the Warhawks this weekend, they they fall below 500, uh, and we do know that they got the win Tuesday night, so the, the record has come back up. But they are six and seven overall. They are the only team. Under 500. Everybody else is still 500 or better, so we're not too far off that pace. Another two wins for the Warhawks gets them right back up there, and we're looking good overall. Old Dominion, though, is the hottest team in the conference. Maybe not the best, you know, you can argue strength of schedule and all that, but they had lost their first game of the season and haven't lost since 12 game win streak for the Monarchs. So they sit atop the conference right now. Troy. Again, they just lost their first game Tuesday night. They sit there at 11 and 1. We've got App State, Southern Miss, both tied at 8 and 3. Georgia State sitting by themselves at 9 and 4. Coastal Carolina with an 8 and 4 record. Louisiana with a 7 and 4 record. Four teams tied at 7 and 5, which would be Arkansas State, Georgia Southern, James Madison, and Texas State. Then we rounded out with South Alabama six and six, Marshall at five and five, and as mentioned a little bit, a little bit ago, the Warhawks round out the bottom of the league at six and seven. But no one's sitting real bad. No one's really on long losing streaks. The longest losing streak in the conference right now sits at only two games. That's App State and Texas State, surprisingly, right? Um, and then the longest winning streak belongs to Old Dominion with twelve. We got a couple. Teams sitting around three or four wins right now. Southern Miss, Georgia State, Coastal Carolina. So some teams may be warming back up, but no one hotter than Old Dominion as we take a look at this as far as the schedule for the rest of the week. Pretty light. Uh, we have games Wednesday. We have five games Wednesday, Wednesday, and then we get back into the weekend series starting on Friday. So we will cover those. I will get back into the daily videos of just previewing those real quick and Hopefully everyone's enjoying this. I know that I'm enjoying getting out to my first live game action this week. And maybe just one more thing I'll throw into this episode. And for those that follow along on social medias and listen and everything, uh, if you just want to throw out your thoughts after you listen to this episode to me as a baseball newcomer, I would say, uh, as far as college goes, watching 
almost day in and day out at this point. What do you think about the pitch clock and how much time it is and how much it's affected the game? Uh, seeing my first game live in person today, I actually thought it works pretty well. Uh, we didn't have any instances in the Duke versus App State game where anybody had a called strike or ball because they took too long. So it seemed to work. Um, maybe it was a bigger issue earlier in the season. I know that I've seen some highlights from the pros where it's becoming more of a bigger issue. Maybe some guys setting their ways too much and these college kids are just realizing that they can't do all these elaborate pre bat routines or pre pitch routines or whatnot, but it seems to work. I, I enjoyed the game's pace a little bit better than I had in the past. Again, I'm not a necessarily a baseball purist, so to mess with it in a little bit of a way just to kind of help speed it along. Uh, I also don't think there was any reviews today. I know I went to this exact same matchup last year in person, and I think before the fifth or sixth inning, there was like three or four reviews, which seemed totally unnecessary. But, um, you know, I know I understand wanting to get the calls right, but it does add a lot of time to the game and a lot of waiting around with not a lot of action. And I felt like today that was a lot smoother. Again, and this game didn't have any reviews from my recollection. Um, definitely nothing that took too much time. Uh, I enjoyed the pace of the game a little bit better. It feels like more of a football game where, yeah, you have some short breaks, but you get kind of right back into the action. So I'd appreciate the, maybe not all the new rules or the things that they're trying to implement, but certainly some of the clock to just help the game along at a more steady pace uh, and maybe shorten the length of the games overall. Certainly enjoyable for us to have young kids who don't sit still very long. I was lucky enough to just be there by myself tonight, but one of the guys I was sitting with uh, did have two kids with him, and they were certainly getting antsy. So I think it helps in the long run, but if you disagree or you have more to say, certainly comment uh, on any of the posts I put. I'm going to push this episode out tomorrow, uh, more obviously on Wednesday. So if you see it pushed there and you got something to say about what these games look like or feel like now with some of these changes, let me know. Uh, but for now, that's pretty much going to wrap this episode up for this week. I uh, hope everyone's enjoying it. I know I am just enjoying getting into this more and more. So I appreciate all the likes, comments, subscriptions, anything that comes my way. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time. Sunbelt Syndicate.